Okay. I got the thumbs up from Holly. That's always a good thing. <laughs> All right, Holly, hit that button. As a preliminary matter, this is Rob Benchley. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. When I call her name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Angus McLeod? Here. Clement Durkees? Here. Rob Benchley is here. Uh, we have a quorum. We're awaiting a few more members, but we'll continue anyway. Uh, let's see. Um, Oh, there we are. God, you'd think I'd have this thing memorized. I don't. Good morning. This is an uh, open meeting of the Wisconsin Advisory Board. It's being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. Due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, Governor's order suspends the requirement for the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with the agenda and materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access is not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. Uh, for this meeting, the Wisconsin Advisory Board is convened, convening by video conference via the Zoom app as posted on the town's website. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted, posted agenda unless I know otherwise. Now that we turn to the first item on the agenda, uh, before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, I will go down on the line of members inviting each to provide name, comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Uh, please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak will state their names and be acknowledged and speak through the chair. And each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Having said that, uh, I make a motion to, can I have a motion to for adoption of the pre, uh, agenda as presented? Motion, Angus. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, uh, Angus? Yes. Clement? Yes. Thank you, Rob is in favor. Mary is in uh, favor. Oh, very nice. The chair notes the, uh, the arrival of Mary Lathrop well. Thank you. And I guess we're moving to, the, to new business, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. And I see. Uh, oh, okay. Do we do we have rep representation with, with this, or is is this just the first one on the agenda? I, I see we had a guest in our in our list of participants. <coughs> okay. okay. So this would be uh, Four Shell Street. The applicant being Lynn Bolton. Uh, I've I've looked at the application, and I trust maybe some of you have as well. And it's basically putting a second story on the existing 
garage that was once a garage and is now kind of an apartment, I guess, or a studio. Mr. Chairman, I have some comments. This is Mary. Please, please continue. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my comments would be these. While the design of the building uh, mirrors the um, uh, main house very nicely, and while I have no objection to the overall uh, building itself, I am really concerned by the height of this structure. Um, and I think a solution might be just lowering it. I, I noticed that they have uh, the, the ground floor um, the first floor has a has a pretty good ceiling height, and I'm pretty sure that could be reduced by six inches and still meet code. Um, but uh, it's right up on the lot line, um, and it would obliterate the neighbor's um, uh, light and space. So it's kind of um, intrusive. All right, thank you. Uh, this is Rob. I, I agree. It's, it's, it just looks very, very tall, a little bit out of proportion in its height. Uh, and I agree. It goes, goes well with the main building. That was Henry Wazerski's house, was it not? Was. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I just think it's the, the, the proportion, you know, all, although it matches, it goes well with the main building, it just seems like it's way too tall for its, its width and length. Hi, this is Angus. Without um, feeling like a broken, sounding like a broken record, I, I agree. I, I feel like it... Uh, um, it uh, resembles the, the shapes and proportions of the house. Um, and, and I think that it does that nicely. Um, as far as the height, uh, I would like to see it come down two or three feet, um, <laughs> if, if that were at all possible. The, the alignment of the front of this <clears throat> garage uh, doesn't look like it comes um, in front of the windows of the shed dormer next door. So I'm not as concerned about, you know, their, the light next door. Um, but, uh, but I do think that the, the eave line, basically the whole roof line could come down um, a couple of feet. I think that'd work better. And uh, this is Rob. Thank you, Angus. This is Rob. Uh, could that be accomplished by just lowering the, uh, by, by, by keeping the gambrel and just lowering the ridge? Or are we suggesting a, a, a regular gable? It, it looked to me, Rob, this is Mary, um, and Angus, you would be way better qualified to make this claim. It looked to me as if the height on the first floor could come down a good six inches. And then you could also take some off the second floor, again, without disturbing their plans for the interior um, and, and bring it down at least a foot, I would think. Yeah. Which would make a, some difference. It's an abnormally steep gambrel. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's almost no gambrel left by the time you get up to the top of that steep slope. Um, I, and I, I know that they must be replicating what's on the main house with, the, uh, with those proportions. Um, I think that the eave could drop, um, but they for uh, head height inside, they don't need so much in the middle of the structure, but they, they uh, might need it at the eaves. Um, so for that reason, if they drop the ridge a foot and a half and they drop like you suggest, Mary, um, the first floor, they might be able to get drop this a couple of feet and maybe change the angle of that upper um, pitch so that th they accomplish what they need to with the, the dormer eaves uh, without making it so vertically high with the ridge. Good. 
So it's doable. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah. Well, no, this is Clement. I'm just, I compared the main house um, Gambrell with the, what they're proposing and it does seem to match um, pretty well. I don't think anybody would really notice that. I, I do think you need to go down. I mean, it is a secondary dwelling and um, they should go down as far as they possibly could, even if they had to change that gambrel, because that's on the sides. You'd only see it um, as you're walking away from the market on Shell Street. So even though it matches nicely on the side, um, if it could change and go down, that would be great. See, that really matches matches what they're proposing. Um, but see, that gives them an extra window. That's almost a, you know, two and a half stories. So this should come down. It's the guest house. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, very nice. Go on to 15 uh, Beach. 15 Beach, yep. It looks like we got Joe here in case we have any questions. Oh, good. Um, Hello, everyone. I, hi, hi, Joe. Uh, Joe was very kind enough to send some information, which I don't believe is here. Um, that's my, my bad, but um, into how this structure could be saved. They looked into um, moving the, the footbridge um, and the costs associated in time and effort and all that. Um, I understand this is not a historic structure. Again, this is that Chip Webster's you know, early 2000s um, structure. Obviously we, we, we're sustainable island. We wanna not have it in the landfill, um, but I think it sounds like from, from Joe's email that they're, they're kind of met every angle they possibly could, could do to salvage this structure. And it would have to be salvaged down in Codfish Park and they've looked at that as well. So leave you to it. So, I have a, um, I, uh, it's Rob, I have a, a copy of that memo that uh, Joe, if anybody has, uh, any questions about it? Mostly about um, he spoke. Well, actually, Joe, you're here. You can tell us. Hi. Uh, so Joe Totten for the applicant, the Burlinghams. So I met with um, Bernie Perkins from Toscana, and we looked at the bridge, and it could be taken down. Um, basically, would have probably a crane there for two days, picking up the bridge, removing it somewhere temporarily. Um, and then putting it all back together. So probably about a week to let's say a week and a half just to be safe that the bridge would not be uh, available to the public. Uh, then we'll have a structural engineer come down and verify all the connections, the joints, screws, et cetera, and everything was fine. Once we got past that, you know, we, we were talking some numbers and walking up the hill and we came up with a number, you know, that was going to be roughly, you know, thirty-five to forty thousand dollars for that. And it's like, that's a lot of money, and my clients don't have that. Um, but then we started to look at the trees, trying to get the structure down Main Street, and it would be removing a lot of limbs uh, from the canopies, and all the way down the street, this was have to happen, all the way to get it out of Sconset. Uh, we thought that that damage would be. That would that would be the worst part of it. The, removing the bridge, we get that, but the the amount of damage would would happen on those trees would just be a lot. I don't think anyone would want to see that happen. Um, so we just kind of said at that point, you know, trying to get the town out there to agree to cut on all these town trees and removing a ton of limbs. We just said we've we've exhausted every avenue. We looked at three potential sites in Codfish Park and. Each one dried up. Uh, one was, you know, I was um, 11.30 getting ready to go to the building department to drop off the last option. And, you know, it was 11.30 for the 12 o'clock deadline. And I got a text message saying that my client doesn't want it. So 
Uh, we would, we don't want it to see a good landfill. I mean, that's, you know, that's $25,000 just to dump that building um, for the estimate we've received plus ex the other expenses. So um, it is what it is. We, we've tried to save the structure and, and uh, since June, um, that has been a task that's always been on my list and thinking we get somewhere and then we just hit a dead end. So um, I heard your comments and I try to do everything possible. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Joe. Uh, it's Rob. Uh, I just want to say again what uh, Caroline said last week about you know the whole housing thing and it's and it's a real shame um, that this couldn't be reused uh, in its entirety. But I wonder if uh, if you're Joe, if some of the neighbors or the community in general would be allowed to do some scavenging so it doesn't all have to go to the dump. Oh, there has been. Uh, my clients posted on Nanticoke consignment and uh, informed them that there were some appliances and um, cabinetry that was available. Um, she came back. She went to lunch with her husband and came back and all the bricks were removed from the back patio. Uh, the outside shower had been removed. Uh, some fencing um, had been removed. All stuff that they wanted to remove. So they were quite excited that things are starting to uh, just go away <laughs> um, more of just under the cover of darkness, so to speak. But um, no, there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, a set of stoops was taken away. So yeah, there's, there's been privets been taken I'm trying to think what else has been taken. Um, I haven't talked to my clients since Friday, but that was the list that I had received as of Friday. So um, we're trying to keep as much out of landfill as possible. I wouldn't be surprised if some windows were taken out. Um, or some interior doors, not that I think there's only one or two in the entire structure. Um, but I do think that some people, as this word gets out, more and more pieces of this house will be taken away. Great. Well, I think that's a good thing. And, you know, as, as, as much of a Lord of the Flies scene would happen there, probably the better. Uh, <laughs> I agree. And, um, you know, maybe the land, and I I realize I make some flip comments, but maybe the land bank could use it for the parts of it for the playground. <laughs> could be a playhouse. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anybody have any, any comments? Well, this is Clement, uh, Rob. Um, I just think it's, it's too bad that the structure can't be rehabbed instead of removed. Oh. This is Angus. I, uh, I just, you know, when there's such a, a housing shortage, we have issues at the dump. Um, there's an expense and effort to, to throwing it away. I just, I, I appreciate the effort that's been made. I, I, I don't feel like it's been exhausted. I, uh, you know, what, was there an option of looking at removing the, the roof from the plate up um, and to avoid all the disturbance to Main Street trees? Um, I, I, you know, worst, worst case scenario, uh, I think, you know, using the individual parts, but, um, you know, it looks like it's well built and it, it's, it's just a shame to use a new structure, um, throw away a, a used structure like that. Um, I think Clement has a good point that it would have been nice to have that be incorporated into uh, a design that, um, th that expands it rather than um, removing it. Yeah, this is this is Mary. Um, if we're talking about a twenty-five thousand dollar estimate for the dumping fee alone, um, and the couple feels that they are financially challenged by the whole building of this one-bedroom structure, um, it, it just just doesn't add up to me. I mean, it, it seems kind of like this is a no-brainer. Don't do what they're 
intending to do. I mean, they've got a house. It, it's not meeting their current needs exactly. Um, but it seems like it's there. It's what they've got to work with. And it, it can't go away. It doesn't, it's not going away gracefully. So bird in the hand. That's my take. Thank you. Uh, any other thoughts? So this 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 will go before the uh, larger board. Is that meeting today, Holly, or to, tomorrow night? Well, it's tomorrow night, but um, if you look at tomorrow night's agenda, I doubt they're going to get to new business. That's what this is considered, new business. Um, they'll probably praying they'll get through old business. <laughs> That's on the agenda. So yeah, uh, we do have a meeting scheduled for this Thursday. Um, we're looking at possibly having a meeting next Tuesday uh, if if the commission is wanting to do that, but it is Thanksgiving week. So uh, as it continues. Wow. Okay. But I've notated your comments and I know Joe will, will as well. Yes. And, and thank you for being here, Joe. I know yeah, it's Joe, not thank you. easy. Well, I've, I've had enough applications on this property, so it's getting a little confusing. That's why I want to be here. No, we appreciate it. I know I do. Great. Uh, 10 okay. Lincoln. 10 Lincoln, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Joe. Have a happy holiday. Thanks, Joe, you, you too. too. All right, so yeah, this is the house at the top of uh, King Street, King Street yeah. Extension. <laughs> I, I have to say, I this is Barry again, um, Miss Blabbermouth of the day. Um, it seems, I, I mean, I, I was shocked to find that they've got a pool back there. And I, I walk this area all the time. I, it, it is so well concealed. So I have to tell you, almost anything they do back there is not gonna get a lot of public notice. And, and by the way, wood decking over um, stone seems un completely unobjectionable. No concern. Thank you. Uh, this is Rob. I, 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 I kind of agree with uh, Mary, this house has been through an awful lot, uh, and so uh, this 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 seems pretty minor. And like you say, it is it is pretty concealed. But with that, I'll ask for anybody else's comments, if they so choose. It'd be nice to see a uh, detail of what how this. There's got to be some sort of. Um, framing system for the mahogany to to be sitting on so my question is yeah how much is it rising um my guess is it's going to be imperceptible but there isn't any detail showing that it's on one and a half inch you know two by sleepers or whether it's on you know two by tens or raised at all You are definitely right about that, Angus. Good point. Definitely pass that point along. Yeah, there's no, there's no section or anything. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's no. just a one pager. Gotcha. And it. It, it's really a porch, isn't it? This is Caroline. I'm late. Sorry. That's okay. Glad you're here. 
Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, isn't that a porch? Yeah, kind of deck. Yeah. It's a, yeah. it's a deck. Yeah, mahogany deck. Like this one down here, very typical. Let me look on the application here. Uh, just said, uh, yeah, it doesn't have any on the application. It doesn't have any elevation dimensions. It just says nine by 14. Uh, deck, patio and steps. But there no, I don't see any other dimensions. That would be nice to have. Hopefully it's not too high. Well, it must connect to the main house, Rob, right? Yeah. So would we want to know where it connects? Yeah, I guess that would be good to know too. Back in that little nook on the nor north, on the uh, top side of the drawing. Thank you. Yep. I, I would prefer that this is held for more information because, uh, you. you know, the, the decking is is one thing, but then how does that sit on top of, at first I, I thought this was all flush with grade, but there's a slope um, with the roadside having, you know, a retaining wall that holds the pool. Um, and, you know, how does that deck terminate and end and sit on top of the wall? And I, I think there just needs to be, uh, you know, the regular requirements of elevation in a section showing uh, what this looks like in its finish. Topo information. It, it looks to me as if, uh, this is Clement, if you look at those pictures, the view from Lincoln, um, where it says existing pool and stone patio, that yep. that's where it ties into the house. You see that there's a decking and kind of a porch. And then it, one or two steps down to the stone and the pool where they want to put the decking on top of that. Yeah, this, that picture right there, existing pool and stone patio. So the decking I think is going to go on top of that stone around the pool. And it's, or, I mean, it's decked underneath the patio. Yeah, I think, I think more information is going to be, going to be appropriate just so, I mean, that should be part of this application. If you yep. look at the photo that's um, on the left side, second from the bottom, there's a little bit of elevation there. Th one, two, three, four steps up to the existing stone, um, sort of behind the garage on the roadside. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And, um, and what was the deck look like at, at that edge? What happens to the stairs because the, you know, the the rise will be irregular unless they, you know, they yeah. need to do the same treatment on the stairs, I guess, that they would do on the wall. I just feel like there's some details we need to see. Yep. Agreed. Yep. Okay. Thank you. We have two for this address. For 10 Lincoln? Uh, no, for eight Isabel. Oh, eight. Oh, yeah. Isabel. Right, I'm sorry. Well, I didn't know existed. First one is the slider. Slider and deck steps. Yeah, that's on the main house and they want to convert the garage into a pool house or studio. This is a sort of misleading property in that it's it's two houses uh, which function entirely independently of one another. Friends of mine rented the back one or the one that's the larger structure that you see on the left-hand side of this uh, schematic 
have they've rented that and I had no idea that there were all those outbuildings um, and that the whole property was still connected. I mean, it's very private back there. Again, this is one of those places that has very little public visibility. Yeah, thank you, Mary. I, uh, we walk our dogs up that road a little bit sometimes and uh, you hardly even notice the house. It's a, and it's a, the, the stretch along Isabel's way with the split rail fence, it's, a, it's an extraordinary property, um, but it's... Yeah, this was Dick Wells. And then obviously these people are the new owners who bought sometime at the end of last year from the, from the uh, heirs of Dick Wells. Yeah. This would be entirely invisible from the road because the road is on the left-hand side of this schematic. Yeah. Due to lack of visibility, I don't have any concerns. Thank you. I, I feel the same way. This is Rob. Oh, and then there was also an application for uh, steps on the front of the house. I can't imagine that that would be a problem. It, it, it needs something on the front. And if, and if any of uh, our board members go up there to have a look subsequent to this meeting um, just be alert there's a dead deer in the bike off the bike path near that house and it stinks to high hell Ew. it's really bad so Hunting thank you for that so you all are okay with this no concerns i don't have any concerns i don't have any all right all right then i can put that one to the side no concerns put on consent um, garage, if that's okay with you, Mr. Chair, to go over to the garage. Please, yes. Okay, I don't know why they weren't together on the agenda, but that happens. Yes, it does. So many of these things, all right. I was, I was surprised to see you got everything out the way you did on Friday, that was quite brilliant. We've got excellent staff. Kathy and Kadeem did an awesome job. Really remarkable. Yes, you do. So at the moment, the building is is a garage. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Rob, does this pool exist yet, or is it just proposed? Um, I, 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 I believe that it. Uh, they they got an okay for it some other time. That's that's according to the plan. Yeah, exactly. But I don't ever remember seeing it before. No, I don't either. Um, it's pretty all hidden from view. Yeah. And again, those sliding doors would not be not be visible. I, I see that our, our dogs did not empty those trash cans. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they need a trash bin. <laughs> there we are. No. I'm assuming this is it right here. Yep. Yeah, I don't I don't have any concerns. No concerns. Anybody else? 
Again, so, lack of visibility. I, I don't have any concerns. Yeah. I have no concerns. No concerns. No concerns. Thank you, everybody. All right. One of your, your favorite properties. Uh, oh, yeah. So this is for the shed that's there right okay. in the back. I, I actually called the previous owner this morning to find out um, <laughs> when, that, when that shed became extant. Uh, and it was there prior to the Arnoffs buying the property in 1960. So we know that this structure is at least 60 years old. They have it listed as 1890. For the shed? I, I think the main house is. I would be surprised yeah. about the shed, but. Actually, I think the main house is older than 1890. Ah. Because I think they're getting that from, let me say that. Is there an HTC survey form this building attached? Yes, that's probably where they're getting that information from. NHL actually has it a lot older, but. And I so, think we've already seen, haven't we, where the pool is going and right. The, right. so this shed has got to go. Well, they could put, they actually, could put their machinery in the shed. Does it have to go is my question. I mean, if it's if it's more than a 60 year old shed, don't we kind of want to preserve those materials? Isn't yeah. that isn't that one of those things we object to having demo on? Did and they I, even try to move it or sell it? Well, there it was are, are you on uh, It said something about demo re or remove. That's how the applications go before the commission, demo, move off. Rarely will you see a demo. For instance, the one for 15 Beach, obviously we know why, um, because they've, they've tried to exhaust all the, the possible moving locations. But typically the, these type of applications are a demo slash move off. Um, okay. If they can't get anybody to move it, then it would be demolished is how that would work. I'd like to see a, a accurate date on that. I don't know if it's on the Sanborn maps um, or if there's a, a way to date it. I'm just going by what's on the application. It says 1890, <laughs> which right. would be like, no, this can't be de destroyed because it's lasted this long. Um, so I have a problem with it getting gone unless there's a, a good home for it somewhere. Here's the 1989 HDC survey. They're considering that a guest house. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Well, I, I can tell you somebody who was a guest in that house. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. The, chair, the chair will not let you speak any further on that subject. Were you also? I, you were not the person I had in mind. But never mind. <laughs> 1890. There is a history of it um, that I've seen um, that's quite elaborate. There is. There is. Um, okay. Because I had it when I looked at the house. Uh, it has loads of photographs. It's wonderful. And I think it came from the Sconset Trust or from uh, the real. Okay. So I'm seeing contributing. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So we so so we would like them to not demo and try to find a new home for it. And even if it's on that property, that would be good, but. Yeah, preferably if it can stay on the property, great. Other, otherwise, I, I, I don't feel like we're doing, doing our job uh, if we let some, a shed from 1890 get destroyed. I agree. Whether it's visible or not. Well, once again, can they reuse it? 
in that location is something else they need. Yeah. So I guess, Holly, you could just put down that the Wisconsin Advisory Board is against demolition of that, uh, yep. considering uh, that it does have a history and that's very fitting for our ways of thinking about historic buildings, big and small. Guest house, that's awesome. Can't wait to leave here and go look at it again. <laughs> I I mean for the first time. Yeah, it had two beds in it when I looked at it last year. Wow. The playhouse. Yeah, wonderful playhouse. Okay. Yeah, actually, it's got to be pretty old because those trees are pretty mature behind it. Mm. And it's not on a slab, right? It looks like it's on little no. piers. Yep. Pier. It's adorable. It's proportionally it lovely. It's it just. A I agree. <laughs> All right. I'm definitely Next. gonna go measure it. I'm definitely gonna go measure it because I, I am gonna be building a shed for myself. I oh. I see. <laughs> if it has to be moved, keep it in Sconset, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm probably not allowed to benefit from that, am I? No, I don't think I am. That would be a financial conflict of interest. Perhaps uh, one parent could apply. You are an advisory board. All right, let's see All this. Right. But true. This is, oh, th this is uh, the summer house. You all saw this before. And this is a historic determination. Yes. Yes. We all, we all agree that it's historic. Um, they're wanting to be uh, exempt from building codes for windows and doors. Oh. So um, when people receive, if you're not familiar, when people receive historic determination from the HDC, obviously with your um, support. They do receive a letter um, that that addresses um, exemptions. Um, any building or structure that is listed in the state or national register of historic places designated as a historic property under local or state designation law or survey certifying as a contributing resource with the national register listed or locally designated historic district or with an opinion of the certification that the property is eligible to be listed on the national or state registers of historic places either individually or a contributing building to a historic district by the state historic preservation office or the keeper of the national register of historic places are exempt from this code um, that's right out of the, the building code and that would be the, the would be referenced in their um, a letter um, so i just wanted to get you familiar with that well my feeling about this is this is Mary. Um, this is definitely an historic structure and it is certainly contributing. Uh, I am, however, in this particular case, reluctant to, uh, for safety reasons, um, to allow um, this applicant to um, get relief from doing the right thing if in fact those windows that are required are to increase the safety of um, the, the inhabitants of the building and the public in general. So this is one of those, this is one of those issues that we talked about in the resiliency uh, workshops. It's, it's a tough one. I mean, I, I can't make the determination about whether those windows would be essential to, you know, maintaining safety, but I mean, codes do exist for certain reasons. They're not arbitrary and capricious. So I don't know. I mean, also I would point out that that stairwell that you see that accesses, I, I'm sure it's, a, it, it's an egress issue. That stairwell is not even on the property owned by the um, applicant. It's on the neighbor's property. On the north, on the north end? 
Yeah. It's on Wolfhead's property. Well into the line. It is right here, Mr. Chair. Request for a letter of historic termination to submit to building department for exemptions on windows and doors to remain true divided light and not thermal and design pressure impact glass. Mm. Oh boy. Mm. So in the core, um, you can't have insulated glass. So typically what's done is that you have a storm window over the single pane true divided light sash um this this was more historic before the fire and then rebuilt after 56 so by our standards it's it's still over the 50 years um so it it is historic um generally in uh in in these situations where there's a significant amount of building i saw a lot of framing going in there so I have a feeling they're meeting current uh, building codes. My guess is, is that this um, determination is um, so that they um, wouldn't have to meet uh, the, the insulation requirements, which I don't think are gonna conflict with, um, with uh, safety. Okay. Right, I, uh, I, I agree with Angus for, good. for what it's worth. <laughs> Yeah. No, that's that's important. I mean, we do we do want them adhering to all safety um, and cleanliness codes, which one might argue has not always been the case in this particular thing. If you look out back, I mean, the people who live on the street that is in back of them, Laurel, they got a, they have a lot of mess to contend with, rats and everything else. Hi, it's Rob. I'd, I'd like to ask Angus a question. When you say the, the uh, thermal the thermal part, that's that's with regard to the windows, correct? That's right. All right. So I, I would think maybe in this case, we could say okay as far as the windows goes, but it's just the windows for this particular application, not the entire structure. I mean, Yes, they, they have, it looks like they've been building the code, but I, I wouldn't want to make it an open-ended thing. It's, if it's for the windows only, and if in fact the gas-filled window panes aren't allowed in the core district anyway. Right, uh, there are some instances, uh, Mr. Chair, where uh, people do ask to, be, to, to have uh, SDL windows instead of TDLs for a historic structure. So, um, based on this particular application right here where they're actually calling out why they're requesting it. Yeah. Um, that would be very clear and that would be indicated in their, any approval letter that the HDC would um, be so inclined to approve. Yeah. Have, we seen, have we seen any door applications? I mean, I, 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 I'm fine with the windows being true divided lights, but did we see any door applications? I know. I didn't see any. And and why are doors um, impact glass and all of that? I mean, that doesn't relate. I think if there aren't any door applications, I would ask that that be removed from the specification and just say windows. But again, being very specific here. Good catch, Mary. I think I agree. Unless there was a door that had I didn't see a door in the schedule I go back okay I don't see any doors that are bubbled but I think that that's a, a, a good point and yeah if there are any doors to be replaced um, please you know ap apply for that application and this is Rob if I might add um, Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but stop there, Holly. Go, oh, go back right up to the fire. All right. Well, so that that was the Moby Dick bar down on the beach. Yeah, so, right. This isn't so the main. That's, this is not the main building. The the uh, the uh, bar burned in '56. Not the main building. So I just want to 
set that little item straight. That's got nothing to do with the main in. Different locus, different yeah. structure. Yeah. Excuse me, I, I misspoke. So the, the structure that we're giving the historic designation to is 110 years old. It is 1910. Yes. Yeah, and the, uh, just for you all knowledge, um, the National Historic Landmark um, record, which we know is, can have some issues, you know, not 100% correct, but does say 1916 and then the HDC survey said 1910. So I would say between obviously 1910 and 1916. Okay. Would be accurate. I think everything's pointing to it, it having um, True divided light, single pane. Um, yes. Yes. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now we're doing good. You guys, you get to be zooming champions, right? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Uh, this right. is Rob. If we're moving to um, 19 Broadway, I went by there a few weeks ago and I, or uh, last week sometime, I think some of else of us are have too. I took some pictures and I meant to give them to Holly, but they've really enclosed a lot of those pipes in uh, uh, wooden chaseways. Uh, so it's, it's looking better. The, the unit still does stick out into the right of way, but uh, maybe that's for the right of way committee. I don't know. Okay. Um, Chair, before we uh, new business, there's, it looks like we still have uh, two Sankety Road to do. We do. We, we do. And oh, I um, didn't see that. And, and Mr. Chair, for the record, uh, this is. Um, Clement's pro property, so we'll just have her recuse, obviously, for the... Obviously, I recuse review. myself, but I am here <laughs> as yes. the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. So noted by the chair. And I, I will say, um, Clement and her husband did submit this as a like kind. The reason why I did not approve it under a light kind, um, it really and truly the only thing is because um, they don't want to paint it and it was historically painted. So that was pretty much the, the reason why. Gotcha. This is Angus. I, I feel like uh, that, that's, this is something that has already uh, been there appropriate. There's precedent for it. And honestly, the, I, I would say that the natural fits in with the environment, um, the, the hedge, better than the painted. I agree with Angus, Mary. Caroline, Rob. I agree. Thank you. It's Rob, I agree. And I would call her, a, a, first off, a repair. So, and if, the, and if this is approved, uh, we can, Tell Clement that she'll never have to paint him again. That's all I need. To, and this could be something that we staff can put on consent. Um, I right. don't think this is necessary for the commission to review, but just wanted to give you that that point that anytime there's applications that come into the to office for the staff, if it's not an actual like kind, even with paint or not paint we cannot approve it and it has to get uh, blessed by the commission. So you, your huh. uh, review of it allows us to be able to put it on consent. So thank yep. you. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you, commissioners. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so um, anybody uh, have anything to bring up in uh, other business? I do. Thank you. Oh, I do actually, excuse me. Um, and I, I, because we were all talking about it the other day, uh, North Gully footpath. Yeah. Um, 
part of part of uh, we saw some interesting paving in uh, one of our sessions, either Friday or Saturday, and now I can't remember which. But it, it was uh, water permeable, um, it sort of looked like riprap uh, that you could put on a slope. Um, uh, it's the it it's kind of um, uh, it's a kind of paving material that allows grass to grow up through the paver. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, because I'm doing a lousy job. Uh, anyway, I just thought that was something we might put forward to Rick about um, some of the material that he might be able to use. And we were tossing around material at last week's meeting. But that was, and we wanted something that was water permeable. Uh, that was that was a material that we saw the other day in our session and it looked good. I'll add to that. As I recall, Mary, it was a, um, I, I have no idea what kind of a uh, material it was made out of, but they were kind of honeycomb circles interspersed with, with brick that gave the feeling of the pathway and then there were the the things that clearly drained and the and the grass could grow up in it um, looked like a good solution for our gully which does get uh, a significant amount of runoff water i don't know how we can describe that i i also did a um with the uh nhc the nantucket historic commission we talked to a former uh, paver who did a lot of the paving in Sconset, and he said what they used to do was pave the surface, and then while it was still damp or wet, they would just dump gravel and sand all over it and then run it all over again so it got smushed into the pavement. And I was trying, I was being much more cautious as I walked around Sconset and so much of our roads are used, uh, done in that way. Um, I was thinking that the most, the closest thing to what I would like to see maybe on Gully, if we don't use any of these more resiliency runoff, kind of not futuristic, but these new ideas about um, paving, that the pathway on South Gully, there is a sidewalk that goes along Gully Road that's just about three feet wide. It has a little slope, it has a little curb so the water can run off. And um, to me, that would be fine on North Gully. If, as I say, if we don't think about using some of these new ideas. Since our last meeting, uh... I was down on, on Middle Gully and, um, and as the, the slope was wherever it was its most extreme, that herringbone pattern of the brick, I felt like I had really good footing on that. And there's, there's something pleasing about the, the brick, um, but I feel like that, um, that, that system that we were talking about in the his, um, historical commission meeting, uh, there was, I think we were tr trying to find out from uh, people who used to make those roads uh, or sidewalks, how they did that. And if there is a particular, you know, something that we could refer to uh, for it to be made that way. Um, but I'd like to check out the path that you're talking about, Clement, um, along, you said alongside well, Gully Road, uh, like near the bridge? Yes, just right underneath the bridge. It's the sidewalk there. And it's perfect sidewalk size and it's got a little um, um, berm to it so the water runs off. There's a huge runoff there, as we all know, that goes right down to the beach, um, which is unfortunate. But no, um, Angus, Mickey Rowland looked into it. He had a friend who was a former paver but he he didn't have any specifics like you know look at page 101 section 5 oh, he right. just said this is the way we used to do it we yeah. used to pave it and then throw the stuff on it and then roll it all in so i'm not sure there's any specifics pr procedure we can give to rob mcneil um other than to say look at what's 
on South Gully Road and the sidewalk there and say that's fine with us. Or um, I think North Gully is a lot longer than Middle Gully. So if we pave it all, it perhaps would be too expensive. I know that Civic Association is willing to uh, help with some of the costs if that becomes a, a problem. But other than that, I feel like I'm in the middle of this and I'm just trying to get as much information to everybody as we can and um, see what we come up with. Thanks for that suggestion. And I, I think what's gonna help that path immensely is just narrowing it. I Absolutely. Think that's the best suggestion so far uh, with grass on either side of it and it being narrowed. Uh, it's, I think our, um, our runoff issues are going to, to be absorbed, as it were. <laughs> ah. Hi, Rob. Uh, this is Caroline. Um, from walking on it, I would say that whoever you all had spoken to had um, actually put the asphalt with the stone on North Gully because it's very clear walking that it's all stones pressed into the macadam or whatever you call it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. it's, it's very different from a road. It's all pebbles and um, small stones. Um, then. No, I agree with Caroline. And since it's so broken up, it's kind of easy to see that they're layering there. Mm -hmm. But I think the narrowness will be a, a, a wonder. If we can keep it narrow, that would be great. And, and put the railing on it too at the bottom, mm -hmm. right. like the last third or... Um, half should have a rail on the ocean side so that those of us who are getting older can hang on to something. <laughs> great, great progress on that. Mr. Chair, I think we'll, we'll keep this on the agenda. Um, yes, I will probably be, be discussing um, some of this with the planning director as well as the uh, DPW director to see yeah. where we're gonna go. But obviously all these considerations from you all um, and possibly the Circle Commission is going to be very beneficial um, moving forward and, and how this is going to be fixed and maintained and in, in perpetuity. So thanks, Holly, for helping. That's great. Yeah, thanks, Holly. I, I, absolutely. Um, as far as the uh, map, the advisory area map for discussion, did you all get yeah. a copy of this? That I, I, this is from what was um, originally. Ooh. Yes, I got this from our uh, GIS coordinator. Um, Clement sent, had sent me a black and white version and then I in turn sent it to him and said, do you have a color version of this? So this seems to be the area that you all were talking about. So is that um, the place of Sakja Pond to Tom Nevers Pond? No, it isn't. It, it excludes the uh, area um, off, up off Hoyks Hollow Road. Oh wait, I see what no, you mean. Me, this includes Hoyks Hollow. Yeah, the red line. Yeah, I'm fine yeah. with this map. Yeah, I'm fine with the red lines. Me yeah, too. the red the red line. This is what was approved with the Sconsa area plan, which is part of the master plan. So it sounded like you all wanted to match that with this. Of course, yeah. any any changes to your um, advisory area would require the HTC themselves to bless it. Um, so if this is something you wanted to move forward with, I can um, talk to the chair on, on getting that on a, an agenda for their discussion. Good. Thank you. I very much yeah. like, like yeah. this map. And I like that it would be coordinated with the Sconset Advisory Plan. Yep. Yeah, that would be great. Holly, do you, uh, which, which date, what's the date on this map? I just curious, is it this century or? <laughs> it says on here that's based on tax assessors information from December, 2005. Okay. So I don't know the, yeah. when the, the area plan was originally, I don't have that information. That from sounds me. about right. Okay, all right. Okay. But, but my understanding from looking at what you all were talking with John Hedden before he left uh, the HDC that you all were trying to have your area um, match the yes. area plan, which would make sense. Um, and yes. do note that this is the time in between now and I think a year and a half to two years will be the, the process of updating the master plan. 
Um, so I think maybe some of you might be involved with that along with Wisconsin Civic Association. And that's something that you, you they would have to be done um, separately, not with staff. Just, just, on, just a sidebar note on that. Yes. Cool. So. Yeah, I, I like the outline. I like the red line. I don't see any reason to make it smaller because who knows what's going to happen in the future. Why don't we just start big? Right. Well, this includes Low Beach Road, which is good, I think. Yes. And look, look at how interesting the spread of Tom Never's Pond is. Exactly. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yep. So and I will. Wetlands. I'll touch base with the chair of the HDC and see how um, we can get this moving forward for you all. Thank you Excellent. all. Thank you all very much. Thank uh, you. I will, I will entertain. Uh, I'll Just take a motion to, to approve our minutes, uh, to approve our comments so far. Caroline has a question, I think. Okay, go. I, I just wanted to quickly thank Holly so much for the past days, which I thought were so educational. Uh, I learned really a lot, and I thought it was really important for Nantucket um, with a diverse audience. Uh, it was really well done. Well done. Well done. Yay, Holly. Thank you very much. Really? I'm coming and I'm hoping we can continue that conversation. Camp is technically not over. I'll have, be having a follow-up discussion with those trainers um, and they, they are here for our you know, education and, and advisement, um, so to speak. So I'm glad you all were able to participate and, and attend. Um, like I said, that's something I've been planning on for over a year, so. Yeah, yeah. And, and your involvement with Resilient Nantucket, for those of you who are able to do so as well. Um, see behind me, we're gonna be having our follow-up uh, this coming uh, Saturday. Um, so I will be getting that information out to the Great. public shortly. Uh, Holly, for the, for the, the people who, who showed up, um, is, is there a way to review that? Is it, is it um, is it yes. possible to watch the whole thing? And for those who didn't participate, is it possible for them to, yes. to catch up? Yes, as soon as NAPC sends me the email letting me know that it's available, because it, that was all handled through them, um, I will be sending it to everybody, even for those folks that weren't able to, able to attend. Um, there's also, if you go back to that initial email I sent that had all the links to the meeting, there was a Dropbox. Um, if you check on, click on that, there's been a document since the camp that's been uploaded from the trainers. Um, I would suggest you all take a look at it. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of information that was um, given to you all. So take a look at it. If you have trouble, just shoot me an email and I will um, get that to you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, can I make a motion to adjourn? <laughs> I would second that. Need a motion well, I, to approve the comments first, Mr. Chair. Yes. Oh, we only got part of the way through on that one. Yes. You're too angry. I, <laughs> I think I heard a second. I'll, I'll do the, the roll call on our approving our uh, comments. Yes. Uh, Caroline says yes. Mary? Yes. Angus? Aye. Clement? Yes. Rob says yes. It's unanimous. Now I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll Angus. second. Thank you. Made and seconded. Caroline? Yes. Mary? Yes. Uh, Angus? Yes. Thank you. Oh, Clement? Yes. All right. Motion made and seconded. It's unanimous. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.